Pookie's doing a walkthrough. <laughs> You're not allowed to walk through, you have to drive through. Hi again and welcome back. Um, Pook and I have received loads of messages on the Isan Farang Facebook group and on the YouTube channel asking if we've given up vlogging, if um, we've had enough, if we're getting tired of it, if it's run its course. The thing is no to all those questions. We're still doing exactly what we were doing before. We've got loads of video content that we need to edit, but we just haven't had the time. The actual house build, the main part of the house build is done. And so now there's loads of little bits and pieces that Pook and I are having to do, sort out, make decisions on that's taken up a massive amount of our time. And I've just had no time to um, edit the videos. So what I've done, I've got the bulk of the house build finished in this video. Pretty much everything done. Um, and, and you'll see that as you go through. But before I, before I show you that video, there's just a little clip I wanted to show you about um, getting the bike MOT in text and how simple it is here and how inexpensive it is. So let's get onto that video first and then I'll flick over to the house build video giving you the update on that. So Pook and I are out today sorting out a few things on our little scooter. Um, it's five years old. Yeah. Five years old now, and so that's when you have the first MOT done. Yeah. So Pook's dad took it out early this morning, got the MOT done, no problems, everything's good. How much was the MOT? 60 baht. 60 baht for an MOT. Not bad, is it? Uh, I haven't got a clue what it would cost in the UK now, I know a lot more than that. And the other thing is, is that we need to renew... It's like the tax disc, isn't it? The yeah. equivalent of the tax disc. Uh -huh. So we need to renew that. We've come here to this hospital. Ekudan Hospital. What's it called, darling? Ekudan Hospital. Ekudan Hospital, which is almost opposite UD Town, just yeah. up the road from UD Town. Yeah. But they're closed, they're not doing it here anymore. We have to go into Central Plaza, don't no, we? No, not Central Plaza. On the way to bypass, take over uh, to go to Nong Kai, but oh, not really? that far. No. Oh, okay. You know, big lot, second brand? Yeah. Near there. Oh. The one I told you that is number one, third brand in Udon Thani. Okay. So second one outside to um, the way to Kongen. Right, so we need to do that, get the new tax disc for the year. Every year we renew that, yeah, don't we? Yeah, this one and on but also, insurance. how much is the tax disc? Can you remember? Uh, it depends on how power your mother buy, okay? Yeah. So let them... This one, uh, between 75cc to 125. This is 125? Yeah, so 300, 323 baht something. 323 baht. baht? That's for a year's, the equivalent of a year's road tax. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that there's compulsory insurance. Not sure that everyone bothers with it here, mm -hmm. but we do. And it's just like a third party insurance cover, isn't it? Yeah, so... And we come here, this is in, this is office here is, is in the grounds of the hospital. There's the hospital. Normally, normally we renew over there, but actually they're closed. So yeah, that's for the tax disc, but yeah. we're here. This is an insurance company, independent insurance company. Mm -hmm. And this is where we get the yearly compulsory insurance, third party covering anyone else. If we run into anyone or, or crash into someone's car, yeah. This insurance covers that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cov cover any repairs on our bike or any insurance no, for us, does just it? Accident, just purely yeah. third party. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go in. I'll let you know how much it comes to when we come out of the office. Okay. So that's done. How much was that, Pookie? Um, 500 and something. Yeah, 500 something. And now we have to take this portable and the book about motorbike yeah, to, the log to book. pay the tax. Okay, to get that square disc. Yeah, oh, okay. that's another hundred baht. Right. Hundred one baht. Something. Okay, so they used to do it here, but they don't anymore. No, because of COVID, mm. so the area is very small. Yeah. So now we have to go to third brand, original one. Close to the fountain roundabout. Or no, just past Irish. The that way, part the com. 
uh, computer shop that way. Oh, okay. Okay. So Past landmark, the computer centre. Yeah, that, okay. that way. Okay, uh, so I'll pick up again when we get down there. So what is this? This is the government office, is it? Yes, this is the third one. Driving licence centre. Yes. And look, they've got a drive through for tax. One second. Pookie's doing a walkthrough. But <laughs> You're not allowed to walk through, you have to drive through. Nice and convenient, and it saves you sitting in an office full of people where there's albeit a small risk of COVID, but there is a risk of it still. So I better shut this off. I don't suppose the person working here wants, wants to be on camera. At the end of the last video, the builders were just pouring the um, concrete for the kitchen floor. That's all complete now and it's cured. Uh, the wiring and the plumbing's all in place. And you can see they've, we've jumped ahead quite a step here. I didn't get a chance to film this as it was happening, but the steel um, platform has been constructed. That will be the um, ceiling for the kitchen. And also it will be the foundation for the roof terrace that we're having above the kitchen. Tiling on the stairs is pretty much complete. Uh, all that's got to be added to this is the continuation of the skirting board that's running right the way up. And you can't really notice it on here. I'll try and get a better shot at some point, but what they've done, they've made the risers slope back. And so each step makes it wider, if that makes sense. So the bottom of each riser, um, it slopes away from the step and that makes the actual step itself wider for a nice size tread. And also we've got this contrast in um, anti-slip edging for the stairs as well. The tiler working on this is a pure perfection perfectionist. You see what he's done, he's actually made that centre line there of the two tiles right in the middle of the step to give perfect symmetry. Uh, both of the shower room door frames have been taken out. The first builder, he, set, he made these doors, these door openings, 70 centimetres. We couldn't get the doors we wanted at 70 centimetres, and so we've had the doors, the door apertures opened up to take the 80 doors, same as the bedroom, so we can have matching doors throughout the house. You get a better view of this steel structure from up here, looking down on it. They're still adding all the cross sections. Um, I think it's about every... 50 centimetres, maybe even less than that, probably 30 centimetres, those cross sections are coming in, so it's going to be very, very strong. Back the following day, just to give you an update on what's been going on, you can see that steel structure now is, is pretty much complete. And you can see the amount of cross sections they've put in there. It's, um, it just leaves no room there for any kind of weakness on that that flooring area above, which is just as well because um, a bit later on I'll tell you we, we had a few issues with it and on the initial design and had to add more to that, um, which added more weight obviously, so the steel structure looks plenty strong enough to hold it. Uh, there's the hole being dug for the septic tank, just outside the kitchen area there. For the hot water system that we're having fitted everywhere in the kitchen sink, uh, both shower rooms, uh, having hot water, they have to use that green pipe, it's a different pipe to what they use for the cold. And they can't glue that as you do with the blue PVC pipe. You have to have a special welder to weld that green pipe on every joint. And you can see back there was the uh, where the sink's going, this is where the shower's going. So you've got the hot and cold feed for the mixer tap on the shower. Anyway, back to the bricks. So these are the blocks they've brought in. Don't need to be the thermal ones that we had built uh, used to build the house because this is just the uh, uh, the outdoor kitchen wall. So the bricks are going to come along here, right the way up to the ceiling, and along here, just over a metre I think it is, metre and a half along here. So this area where I'm standing now, this is where the oven and the hob are going to go. Moving along here, this is where the sink is going to be, and what else have we got? That's it. Yeah, originally we were going to have the oven in a unit up here, eye level oven, but we decided against it. We decided to put 
all of the cooking stuff down the end there at the end of the kitchen away from the house. Along here is going to be worktops, storage cupboards and a worktop area there and the washing machine is going to go here in this corner. So it looks like they're going to be cracking on and getting this, this wall built today. Both shower rooms are coming on nicely, the tilers are cracking on and um, doing this nice design you've got the mosaic strip in the middle there and there's going to be a, a strip of mosaic tiles going up where the mixer tap is going to be for the shower and of course the rain the rain shower head. We've got two gypsum walls being built, one here for the um, spare bedroom come office and down the end there that's going to be the prayer room. So just those two gypsum walls. The reason for gypsum walls being added is because we actually moved where those walls were originally going, where they were on the original plans and the original builder said that we would probably be better off using gypsum rather than brick because there's no supporting beam underneath it. Not so sure myself, I think that we probably would have been alright but we just went along with it anyway. So we've got the wall now. The wall for the kitchen and they've put the steel work in here, see these little steel rods because what they do, a certain height on these blocks, they don't just keep building up and up in one go they put a concrete beam in just to give it extra support and rigidity I think is the word I'm looking for and then we've got this wall here which comes out enough to give a bit of shield for the um, hot plate that's going to be here and the oven, the European oven is going to be here so they're cracking on with that, that's coming along nicely. Septic tank's in place. So they've put that in and they've connected it to the outlet from the toilets. And then all they need to do now is this part over here, that pipe sticking out there, they need to bring that around. That's gonna be the gray water, the clean water or the cleaner water coming out that goes down to the drain over there. I love this mosaic tile, I think it looks great, just really sets it off nicely. Looking good. And they've just soaked this floor here so it looks like, oh the door frame's in place now. So it looks like they're going to be tiling down here in a little while, finishing that bit off. This is all done, door frame's in place, all of this framework's in place, so that's ready for the insulation to go in between the plasterboard and the plasterboard to go on to complete that wall. And the wire up there for the switch which is going to be just inside the, the room here on this side. The door will be opening against that wall there. Still got the door frame to go in place on this one and this was taken out because we've now got the 80 doors in the bathroom as well as the rest of the house. I don't, oh I can understand with smaller bathrooms or bathrooms or shower rooms that can't take the bigger door but with something like this, an 80 door is not a problem at all a door opening up against this wall here, there's plenty of room as you'll see there's loads of room there for a sink unit, vanity unit or whatever we want so anyway yeah that's all ready it's got the um, mosaic going round here and then down here where the shower's going we've got this nice feature of the mosaic tiles here the pipes are already in place, cold water and hot water and uh, this is where the mixer tap is going to go and then we're going to have the pipe coming up here and you've got the small shower head there that you can take off and then going straight up to the rain shower over the top. Here we're going to have a, a glass wall put in so you've still got the, open, the full open space showing through the glass but it just stops any water coming out. I don't, I, I just couldn't live with one of those bathrooms where it's all open and the whole of the floor gets soaking wet. I couldn't, I, I couldn't live with that. So that's why we've got the glass dividing wall coming here. We were going to have a door on here, a glass door, but it's added expense and it's not needed really. This shower area is gonna have a little step down. So that's gonna be the only wet area in the bathroom. The rest of the floor is going to be just below the, the hallway outside. But um, so yeah, that's adequate. The fact that we've got a reasonable size space here and we've got the glass wall coming across from here, probably to about here, 
and that will just give us a, an area to walk through into the shower area and that water is going nowhere that's not going to go out on the toilet area or the sink area that will all be dry another morning and another update on the house a little bit overcast today not quite as bright as it's been for I don't know how long but um, it's still nice and warm though good morning Oh uh, yeah, I think the guys have already started work. It's early. It's um, about half six, quarter to seven. And I came round here yesterday evening and saw the progress, how high this wall had been built and some more has been done since then. So they must have already got started working this morning. Must have done. Let's have a look round. So the first part of the flooring in the bathroom has been tiled. This is the dry area in the bathroom and where these tiles end this is going to be where the glass wall goes and of course that's the shower unit there, the wet area. Look at that, look. We've got the beginnings of a roof terrace. And I'm reckoning that sign there says Stay off of here, don't walk on here, something along those lines. Because this is just, um, this is just that uh, concrete composite board. Hang on, it's got the name stamped on there, T-I-P-I, T-I-P-I board. And that's the first layer that's gone down, ready for the roof terrace. Looking pretty black up there today, they forecast some rain for the next few days. Oh, Pook's dad's busy. Doing some things in the garden now, having a bit of a tidy up. It's not until you start getting the brickwork built up you um, realise the scale of the place. This is a wonderful space and this is probably where we're going to spend most of our time. It's strange because in, in a country like this where you've got beautiful temperatures most of the time, almost all of the time, it's very rare it gets too cold to sit outside. But um, this is going to be the area where everyone's going to meet, sit, eat, talk. This is going to be like the communal area of the house, I think. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure that the front door of the house is very rarely going to be used, if at all. This area at the back of the garden here is going to have a, a sliding gate and that's where everyone's going to come in, in and out and straight into the kitchen area here it's going to be great you can see up on that um, on that steel post there they've welded those rods onto the steel post and that's to tie in the brickwork so the brickwork's not just sitting against the flat surface there um, it's got something to tie in and give it more strength they've also built this concrete beam all the way around now solid beam which again gives it more strength rather than just using block work all the way through they put this in the middle and it gives it that additional strength makes it more rigid Pookstad's over the back there doing something to the banana trees. That bit of land right over the back, that's Pook sisters, that's where she's going to build her house. And I'm looking, I'm hoping that she does it so that the front of her house comes out onto the garden here. We can take down all that fencing and while she's there, and like while she's living there obviously, and just have this whole area as a joint garden between Pook's sister and ourselves. I think it'll be nice that she can just fall out of bed, come across the garden here and I know for a fact that everyone's going to be meeting up in this kitchen area. I know it. Looking forward to it. I really am. Back again with another morning update. Floor tiling's complete in here. They just need to do a little bit more over in the corner there. And 
the mosaic work running up where those pipes are and you can see if I stand here you can see there's just a little lip here which um, where the glass wall is going to sit. There's going to be a glass wall along here keeping the water in from the shower. So the glass wall will sit just inside this lip stopping any water going out onto that part of the bathroom and you can see there's a slope. It starts off shallow there, gets deeper there and then comes back up again so the water will run away on that drain. Have a look at the kitchen area. All the brickwork's finished, the block work should I say. Block work's complete. And I would imagine today they're gonna to be starting on the units, the bricks or the, I'm not sure if they're using bricks or blocks. I'd imagine they're using bricks for the actual kitchen units here, ready to take the inserts where the doors are. So that's all complete. Um, Wiring's in place, plumbing's all in place, and we've got everything for this round at uh, Pooks Brothers, the sink, the, oh no, tell a lie, we're waiting for the hot plate, the hob, where the um, burner rings go. We've got the oven ready to go into the unit, the uh, European oven, we've got the sink, um, yeah, we've got everything else for here. We need to get a ceiling fan as well, we want to put a ceiling fan up here, just to keep the air moving. No air conditioning out here, obviously, because it's all open to the garden on these two sides. Okay. This, yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah, the switch, yeah. Yeah, the switch, yeah, so I've got to put it in a fasten box. Okay. For safety, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, just to answer some questions on one of your comments. Oh, go on. Um, right. Even though we're using a, a blue and a brown wire here for the, the lighting, it's, it could be white, white, yellow, yellow, whatever. Yeah. This is switched live, right? The neutral's already on a rig in the roof, okay. in the ceiling. Yep. So all you need is a common live and a switch live. Right. So this one actually connects to there, to the light. Uh -huh. You've already got your neutral in the ceiling. Okay. So for the person that asked the question about um, why you need two wires, that's why. It's the right system. Same we're using the UK, uh, the US, it's exactly the same. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Personal answer to just one comment on the YouTube channel. Another beautiful day, although it's just started raining a little bit. We've got beautiful sunshine and a bit of the rain just started, which is great because it gives us a chance to test the kitchen roof, make sure that's sealed okay. You can see looking at this um, ceiling or roof area uh, that some of this is leaking. Um, we had the leak coming through that board there and also on, on the walls as well. There was a, a couple of places where the water was coming through. Spoke to Brian about it and um, he assured us everything would be okay when the, when the roof area was finished. back again just to do a quick update on the how the house is going Ooh, licking the glass look at that let's have a look around so let's go and have a look oh this is the shearer ball by the way this is like concrete composite board that they're going to use for the decking on top of the roo the roof terrace okay i've been read and have a look about this mm. the most people they use for the for the floor yeah, we're using it for the floor on the roof terrace. Yeah. Okay, let's go and have a look. 
We've got the water tank ready. So, <laughs> this is how they construct the kitchens. Not always, you can get like a, what we'd know in the UK as the um, like MDF um, units and things like that. They say they just, they never seen anything like it before. Ah, there you go, because learning. It's very steep and you lose space in the side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know what they mean? Yeah, but it didn't, you see, this is something that didn't have to happen. But what, they didn't do that before. They, they could have done it with smaller bricks mm. and they could have made these bits thick mm -hmm. and then these bits just thin. Just th this here could have been a small brick and then thick brick there. Mm. Didn't have to be built like this. No. I'll mention that to Brian. Mm. Another beautiful day here in Udon Thani. Sun shining, well, almost clear skies. A little bit of cloud, a little bit of light cloud, but absolutely beautiful. Nice temperature as well this time in the morning. So it's been a few days now. I haven't been around here doing any filming. I've just been so busy with other things outside of the house and I'm hoping to be able to tell you about that fairly soon, about some investment ideas and things like that that I've had going. Anyway, so back to have a look around the house. There's a, a lot happened out in the kitchen. So uh, I'm just seeing who, who these neighbours are passing by. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit happening out in the kitchen. So um, let's have a look around and uh, I'll show you how they're getting on. You see they've put down these covers over the tiles that protect everything so anything that comes in and is stored here goes on top of these covers, any tools, tiles, anything like that just to protect the tiles. Brian's also been out and bought this carbon, this carbon sheeting and you'll see why. The rooms that are finished off he's going to cover the, the tiles in those as well so as people are in and out doing other bits and pieces um, and plus the other thing is it's going to be masking as well because once all this work's finished there'll be a final um, job for the paint, the paint team to do and they'll be covered in and rather than working on top of the tiles they can work on that cardboard and it helps protect the tiles. As you can see all the way up the stairs here, it's like it's been carpeted, look, with this corrugated cardboard so that's all protected. and more of that shooting as well, protecting everything up here. Let's have a look around. I can't remember where I finished off last time. So this is the prayer room, all finished off with the plaster ball. Door frames in place. Light switches in place. No changes in there, that was done ages ago. And this is the office come spare bedroom. And this area here is going to be a built-in wardrobe. So we're going to have mirrored wardrobes in all the bedrooms. And uh, it, just, it just increases the perception of space in the room. So all of this wall here is going to be mirrors. And behind the mirrors will be wardrobe space. And we continue down to here. There's a little bit more time to do just up there. But uh, those tiles are waiting, and those tiles are waiting for the tiles to return. They've been away, they've had a bit of a holiday over some ground, and so they'll be coming back and finishing this tile now. And out onto the balcony area or the roof tennis. So this has had the boards put down, it's been sealed with um, it's like a grey primer they put down and then they put bitumen down between the gaps and filled the screw holes with like um, it's like an acrylic they, they fill the screw holes with. Then another coat of this grey stuff. Then I think it's going, I'm trying to think now, I'm a little confused, but I think this is going to have 10 mil um, composite ball, it's like a concrete ball going over the top of this. That as well is going to be sealed with the grey stuff and um, and then it's going to have the, what are they called, the shearer boards 
the concrete composite boards on top of that and that's what they finish off. And of course the Shearer boards when they're finished off they're also sealed with an acrylic paint. So then of course in between each stage we'll do the water test, we'll get the hose up here and just leave it running on that roof space just to make sure that every layer of water site. And this is where the majority of the action has been taking place over the last few days. When they started building these, we, we had the original plan of where we wanted the um, kitchen units to be. And once you start seeing it laid out in brick, it just doesn't look quite right sometimes. And so we had them take those bricks down and change it for us. Absolutely fine, they've done that. So now we've got this area here. That's going to have the cooker hood up there and the extractor running up inside the chunking. This is where the European oven's going and the hob. Next to it is going to be the gas cupboard. That's where the gas bottle goes because they don't have plumbed in gas here like we do back in the UK or in the States. They use butane gas bottles. So that's where the gas bottle will go next to the hob. This is going to be the sink unit and he's just putting in a box underneath there for the, um, for the water heater. We're having hot and cold water on the sink. Double door on that. There's going to be a drawer unit in this space here, a single door in this space here, giving us a nice size cupboard around there. We've got double doors going on this one, giving us a double cupboard. Single door going on this one, that's my phone, so I'm just going to have to cut for a second. So, where was I? Single cupboard in this area here. This is going to be a single door cupboard, storage space there. Next to it, this is going to be for the washing machine. So there's a nice wide space, and we're not sure what washing machine we're going to get yet, so all we did was we looked around, measured the widest washing machine possible, and then we've used that measurement and a bit more to make sure that we've got space for the, um, the upright washing machine we're going to have there. And of course you've got the drain and the water supply coming into that area, power socket there, power socket there, and over there. You see, it's only now that you actually get any idea of this perspective of this. It's now the wall's up and they're starting to put the units in, you realise what a large kitchen it is. And it's strange, you know, when we started building here, our plot of land is pretty small really, in comparison. When you look at a lot of my mates' places, they're sitting on one rye, two rye. And I, you know, it's all that we could do at the time. So we bought this small plot of land and I thought, okay, it's all right, all we need is a small place. Now the place is built and I'm actually walking around in the different rooms in there. It's so much bigger than the apartment, that the, the condo that me and Poop were renting back in the UK, so much bigger. I mean, this kitchen is massive, much bigger than the kitchen that I had in, back in the day when I had the big house in Bexley. This kitchen is so much bigger than that as well. And uh, we've managed to get it all onto this little slip of land that we've got and we've still got a nice garden at the back here as well. So, just sort of pop round and have a look at this next stage of building these kitchen units. And you can see that they've built this formwork up and supported it here to build the lintels across, to lay, to lay these lintels across. And there's still, still work inside here to add, add strength as well. And they just fill these little moulds up with the uh, cement. And that's going to give it a nice solid... Concrete, yeah, concrete. Concrete, sorry. Yeah, okay, yeah, I've just learnt something there. So cement with, con with aggregate is concrete. concrete giving nice strong beams right the way across those little spans there where the cupboard doors are going to go. Back again with another quick update and you can see this reinforcing steel, these steel rods that have been put in. This worktop's going nowhere. So you know when you're going, you know when you're going crazy with the pestle and mortar, Pookie? Pock, 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 pock. Yeah, yeah. Some You'll be all right on no, that. No, I'm not doing some on the top of, I do on the floor. You should break the tail. <laughs> yeah. No, I do on the, the floor, on the floor and I put well, a big mat. Put a wooden block on there and do it like you used to do in Bexley. No, no, no. Nah. No, I never do on the top in Bexley. Oh, you always did it on the floor, floor. that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I'm using a smaller spoon. Smaller aggregate there. Yeah, smaller in the, aggregate, um, yeah, to make sure that's, because it's only a four centimeter. Yeah, it's easy to get in every single part. Okay.
I'm looking at the video clips that I've got left on the main part of the house build um, and I'm thinking that the next video will be the completion of the, uh, the main house build. I'm not talking about the fine details, the garden walls and things like that, but the main house build I'm pretty sure is going to be completed in the next video. Little details like the guttering, finishing off the kitchen, finalising the work in both shower rooms and dealing with the problems that we have with the roof terrace. Installation of the ornate uh, handrail that we've had fitted on the stairs and how we overcome a major problem with the roof terrace. So be sure to catch the next video, the final video of the house build and if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and you'll get the heads up if you hit the bell as and when the new video is posted. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.